This is the Kubot P20, a budget phone with a full screen design, good specifications and more. Stay tuned to the full review to learn all the pros and cons of this device. The phone ships with all the usual items and you get a pretty standard soft TPU case. The P20 has a trendy notch full view display that is pretty good. It's plenty sharp, viewing angles are great and colors are quite natural, but sunlight legibility is just average. The overall build quality and feeling in the hand is great even though the phone uses a plastic backplate that is made to look like glass. The frame feels like metal to me, but I'm not sure about that. Either way, the phone feels sturdy and the buttons are nice. On the back, we have a vertically laid out dual camera system. The fingerprint scanner is quite accurate, but as usual to those budget phones, the display could light up a little bit faster after unlocking the phone. Other key features include a headset jack, a micro USB port for charging, a 13 megapixel selfie shooter, notification LED light, and a hybrid dual SIM card tray. The loudspeaker quality is just average or even below average. The sound is tinny and there are quite a few distortions at the highest volume settings. Here is an audio sample. The list of specs include an Octacore MediaTek CPU, 4GB of RAM, and 64GB of internal storage. Gaming performance is actually pretty good, games like Asphalt Extreme, Shadow Fight 3, and even a newly released Asphalt 9 run quite well, with just occasional stutter. The PUBG is playable too, again there is some stutter and skipped frames but no serious lag. If you watch my videos, you know that I always praise Kubot for keeping stock Android user interface and the P20 is a great example. The phone's UI is clean, fast and smooth and there are no unnecessary features. After using the phone for about one month, I didn't have any stutter or lag. The phone feels smooth all the time, which is really impressive considering a budget price. The main camera can take decent daylight pictures that may look nice on social media. However, I can't assert this is the best camera in the price range of phones, but it's decent. What is a bit frustrating is that neither portrait nor low light image quality does not impress, just like on most of the budget phones. Selfies could definitely have more detail and sharpness, but well, they look okay. 1080p video quality is mediocre as the video could be more detailed. 720p selfie video quality is quite average. Same can be said about sound recording quality. Make sure to check out the video description to download full resolution camera samples and be the judge. As for connectivity, the P20 is pretty good. Call quality and signal reception are decent and I've never had issues with Wi-Fi or Bluetooth. Unfortunately, the P20 has just a few sensors and there is no gyroscope that is required for 360 content. Battery life is definitely one of the strong points of the P20. My record screen on time was over 8 hours but if you use the phone more intensively, you should expect to get about 6 or 7 hours of SOT. It takes about 2 hours to fully charge the phone with a supply charger. The Kubot P20 shapes up to be a pretty good budget phone that looks nice, it's well built, it has clean Android that runs fast, and even gaming experience is quite good. I also like display quality, camera can take decent pictures in daylight, and the battery life is pretty good. However, I don't like the loudspeaker quality and the phone does not have a gyroscope sensor. At the end of the day, the Kubot P20 has a few trade-offs to keep the price reasonably low, but all in all, I think it's a pretty solid budget phone that has both the looks and good overall performance.
But what do you guys think about the Kubot P20? Would you buy this phone or would you choose another device? As always, use the comment section down below, like the video if you liked it, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and as always, it was Linus, thank you for watching and see you soon.